Netanyahu wants a regional war with Iran. Why? When Israel bombed Iran's embassy in Syria two weeks ago, killing one of Iran's top generals, they were knowingly setting off a chain of events that was designed to drag Iran into war. Iran retaliated for the embassy bombing on Saturday, and now, as I'm recording this, the Israeli war cabinet is deciding on timing and scale for its attack on Iran. In hindsight, you can see how the embassy attack was obviously going to trigger this chain reaction we're seeing right now, which could very well boil over into an all-out war. Bombing another country's embassy is an act of war, and Israel obviously knows this, they knew Iran would respond, so then the question becomes, why do it? The main reason is that Israel's basically lost the war in Gaza. Gaza. At the beginning of the war, Israel set out three primary goals for the war, to destroy Hamas, to get its hostages back, and install new leadership in Gaza that would prevent the Palestinian resistance from ever taking power again. After six months, Israel has withdrawn the majority of its forces from Gaza, it's achieved none of its goals, it's indefinitely postponed the invasion of Rafah, and has really only succeeded in turning itself into an international pariah. Like virtually every colonial power before it, Israel's military philosophy is that the side with the most firepower is the side that wins. Israel has historically relied on the use of overwhelming artillery and air power to do most of the work, no different than the United States in Afghanistan or Vietnam. They've also added to it the medieval-style siege campaign and starvation. But this strategy almost always fails, because it doesn't acknowledge that war is ultimately a political battle with a large martial component. You can kill a ton of enemy combatants, you can starve people deliberately, but that doesn't mean they'll accept your dictates. In many cases, it actually makes the resistance to you stronger, because the friends and family of the people you've killed just end up taking arms against you. This is why Israel was never going to beat Hamas. The last six months have shattered Israel's illusion of invincibility. It's reaffirmed that Israel can be beaten in battle and basically achieved for Israel the exact opposite of what it set out to do. Israel's projection of strength was supposed to deter resistance. Now, that's gone. Not only did Israel's massacre greatly increase the Palestinian people's support for the resistance, it also undermined its strategic alliances. Israel's callous disregard for human life sparked mass outrage in Western capitals, which made it politically impossible for Western leaders to support Israel without being perceived as supporting genocide. All of these factors combined have, for the first time, created a countervailing force on Western support for Israel, which has changed the odds for Palestine tremendously. We made a whole video going through all the ways the protests and changes in public consciousness are having a real impact on politics, so if you haven't seen that video, make sure to go to our page at Breakthrough News and follow us. But anyway, in that video, we talk about how the tide is shifting with the US-Israel relationship in a way we've never seen before. In a recent anonymous interview with The Telegraph given in late March, Israeli intelligence officials admitted that without US support, Israel wouldn't be able to defeat Hamas. The official says, if you'd asked me this a month ago, I would definitely say yes, we can eliminate Hamas because at that time, the Americans were backing Israel. The US doesn't support Israel going into Rafah, which they did before, so the cards right now aren't good, meaning Israel has to do something dramatic and drastic to change the momentum and climate. And now we all know what that dramatic and drastic thing was. The other secondary factors why Israel wants this war are domestic. In case you haven't noticed, Israeli society is starting to rip itself apart over the war. In the past few weeks, there have been massive protests in Israel, protesting Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's handling of the war. Now, to be clear, they're not protesting because the war has killed tens of thousands of innocent people. They're protesting because they want the Israeli government to change tactics to get the Israeli hostages released. It's clear that as soon as the war ends, new elections will be called, which Netanyahu would almost certainly lose. Therefore, for Netanyahu, the war can never end. And with Israel's humiliating defeat in Gaza, his only choice is to expand outward. And if you're thinking right now that risking a regional war to save your political career is insane, all I'll say is, Yes. And that brings us back to the embassy bombing. Iran really is the only adversary big enough to assure direct US involvement. Israel could pick a fight with Hezbollah in Lebanon, and they very well might, but the US won't go to war to save Israel from Hezbollah. Iran, on the other hand, has been in the US crosshairs for decades. There's an entire wing of the imperialist class that's basically dedicated itself to taking down Iran for the last 20 years. 
Israel knows that if it instigates a war with Iran, the vast majority of Republicans, and probably also Democrats, would cry for war. The US is saying for the time being that they don't want to get involved in a war, but that's much harder to say when missiles are flying. Going to war with Iran would also allow Israel to flip the narrative from Israel being the genocidal superpower decimating Gaza to the tiny European democracy fighting the big, scary Islamic Republic. Israel hopes that people will forget about Gaza if this war with Iran starts, and this strategy is already being pushed by leaders in the Israeli war cabinet to start a bigger war to recover some sympathy in the West. I want everyone watching this to just really take a moment and appreciate how insane this is. The fact that Israel thinks it has the right to drag the entire region into war just to get out of the mess that it created. And this is the country that US politicians are constantly insisting is our greatest ally. I want every American to think long and hard about what we're being told here. Would our greatest ally take billions of our tax dollars to buy weapons, to massacre women and children, and then blackmail the politicians who dissent? Would our greatest ally bomb another country's diplomatic facility to drag our country into fighting a war they couldn't win? Israel is a great ally for the military contractors or the oil companies or the imperialist strategists at the State Department. For them, it's an extension of their interests, but not for the vast majority of people. If we had a real democracy where the special relationship could be put to a vote, the relationship with Israel would end immediately. But we don't live in a democracy. The two major political parties aren't accountable to us and are still fundamentally wedded to Israel. The only thing that would change our policy is if the movement for Palestine makes the price for supporting Israel so great that the ruling class can't support Israel without being seen as completely illegitimate. But whether or not that movement comes into being, that is up to us.